young country eager to grab every opportunity a country that wants to compete with the best in the world needs a very strong base in education higher education of course being as key as primary education and the secondary education as well but where do we stand when we look at higher education we have some key players with us who are going to look at just how far india has moved the road ahead and and the key question if this is the best time to be involved in higher education in india well this team panel with me and dr raj singh vice chancellor of gd goindra university thanks for being with us uh, also dr vijay gupta vice chancellor of the university thanks sir for being with us uh, vinay pastrija chairman wlc college uh, india and dr sanjeev marwa director jk business school thanks also much for taking our time to be a part uh, of this panel dr raj singh uh, first you what do you believe is the single biggest achievement when we talk about higher higher education in india and and the biggest failure or setback well if you look at higher education today uh, we have reached about 706 universities including about mm. 205 private universities mm. today private sector contributes about 59% of higher education and this percentage is only likely to grow right when you talk about an employability of the graduates mm. and an employability in the context of a very large number of youth in a country mm. is not a very good indicator right that's where the role of universities and private institutions becomes even more important <coughs> and i'm referring to the the employability right the key challenge therefore is to uh, make graduates employable and therefore education has to be very close to real life mm, true and in that sense the teaching mm. has to change mm. public sector somehow has failed to respond to these mm. uh, growing requirements of the market as well as the graduates mm. and unfortunately when we talk about quality we always talk about private sector right public sector is never talked about as if they already have a quality right. Uh, I think the paradigm shift needed today I mean, is that. Of course, we have this, the, the key institutions that absolute, are sort of have absolutely. set their own benchmarks. Are uh, there very few in number? I mean, right. uh, Fair uh, enough. When you for look a at the large, right. when you look at the larger number to right. be trained, I mean, that's right. minuscule, I of would course. say. Yeah. And therefore, uh, we need to start talking about quality in the context of mm. all institutions, mm. whether private or public. Right. Today, if you look at the numbers, mm. we have about 30 million enrollments in higher education. Mm. By 2020, the government wants to. reach about 40 million to reach that magic figure of uh, mm. uh, gr of 30 which is now around 21 22% mm. that needs about 10 million more, more seats in right. next 6 years right and if you look at 2030 right. vision right. we need to double this right means another 40 million we need to add about 71 million will be the uh, seats required in higher education right and now we are going to sort of step up to fill this gap that Absolutely. being right you of course uh -huh. raised many points there mr prasreech if i could get you in at this stage there's no dearth of youngsters wanting the best there are of course lots of families india traditionally being a country where parents will go the extra mile raise the funds try and do their best to get their child an education the scene also maybe slightly very slowly but also changing for the girl child but coming back education the focus has been even in our political parties in the last in the last election we saw the youth being the big focus but where do you believe the failing lies and we talk about higher education a lot of the issues that uh, uh, dr raj singh there mentioned quality of course being is, is that really the biggest concern even for you more than that it's what are we teaching even at mm. the best mm. institutions right are we teaching something that's relevant mm. are we teaching something that really works in the market mm. so then there needs to be a soul searching on the, on the entire you know right. larger picture of education right because we, what we have over there is our universities top grade universities very good mm. but most of the people going out after that right so we exactly. have the iits where everybody goes out right. we have uh, the top institutions where everybody goes out, travels right. abroad right there are issues of content there are issues mm. of who's teaching what they are teaching right um, what is the relevance of this to the market etc mm. etc et etc Dr. Gupta, where do you believe is, is is the one player where private players can make the biggest difference? Like Dr. Raj Singh said, of course, they're you know shouldering a lot of the responsibility, more than half the responsibility now with the private players. They have stepped up to the plate. But what, what do you believe is is the one key area where they can impact the maximum change? You see, the problem with private hmm. education hmm. is twofold. Hmm. One is the cost of education. Hmm. any good education it costs so much right. that it cannot be sustained on tuition fee alone right. unless the tuition fee goes on the order of 4 to 5 lakhs per year right, right. which how many indians can afford that mm. you see in a institution like uh, like an iit mm. the cost of educating is 2 to 4 lakhs mm. on direct cost mm. it does not include the infrastructure cost which are already been paid for right. 
a private industry will have to pay for that infrastructure start from cost. Scratch, right. Infra start from scratch. Right, right. So it's a very difficult thing. Mm. And the second challenge comes in mm. is the uh, image. Mm. Good faculty mm. does not like at the moment mm. to make a career mm. in, uh, in a private university mm. because a private university will look down upon generally. Right. Yeah. That's a good point. Dr. Marwa, if I could ask you, when we, when we talk about the gap between what the private players are providing and what the uh, other state-backed institutions have on offer, do you believe this is a gap that sort of can be bridged? It's, it's a huge gap mm. and I think uh, the narrative uh, for a very large country like ours mm. have gone horribly wrong. We should not be discussing private versus public. Right. It has to be industry participation in higher education, mm. which is abysmally low. Right. And uh, most of it is lip service. Mm. And that's where probably, you know, we have gone wrong. Uh, the industry has never shown keen interest in terms of setting up institutions. Mm. And that's where the percentage of uh, students finding uh, challenges in employment comes up from. Mm. And also, the, the twin problem of Indian education system is well known and I agree with the professor that uh, first of course is the reach. Mm. Uh, we have just about 13.6 GER uh, mm. which has to go to 30 percent mm. and perhaps you do not require too many institutions to, to reach that level. Mm. I think we have a fairly robust infrastructure for higher education in place. Mm. What is required is perhaps the second shift mm. or uh, higher enrollments mm. within the same infrastructure. Mm. The second of course is the quality challenge mm. and that's huge. Almost about 50 percent of the posts of faculty members mm. across the country, including private and public, remains vacant, vacant at, at, right. at any point of time. Right. So half the faculty is not available on roll. Right. That's a challenge right. which this industry has to answer. Mm. And I think uh, coming back to the, uh, the, the first point, mm. higher education system and challenges it faces, mm. I think there is a governance issue that needs to be addressed. Mm. We are, of course, the largest education system mm. in the world. Right. However, the quality challenge of 50% faculty post remaining vacant right. it requires that the entire system needs to be having a relook. Right. The entire governance system of how to involve industry into education system right. is a big challenge. Right. The governance system actually requires that. Right. How to how to sort of get corporates involved, how to get industry involved. We keep speaking about this, Mr. Pasricha, but very few, like, the, you know, like the, the point that Dr. Marwa is making, very few people actually step up to the plate. So, uh, See, why do you believe that? I mean, there still a, seems to be, despite all the talk, there still seems to be a reluctance. Because education hmm. is meant to be a charitable activity. Hmm. You cannot have for-profit universities. Hmm. You cannot have industry in it. Hmm. So, most of these private universities are actually for profit pretending to be charities. Mm. Mm. So there is they're taking out money from all sorts of which because is why the business the of education is now well known. So yeah. You know, so uh, so they're actually businesses masquerading mm. as charities. Mm. So which is the dichotomy? Mm. So no matter what they say, mm. people will not look at them with uh, mm. you know great respect mm. because it's actually they're saying something and doing something else. Mm. The moment the government decides that higher education can be for profit. Mm. Mm. There will be industry, there will be enough capacity that can be generated. Mm. That's one. Mm. It has to be made for profit right. for any honest person to invest right. in it. I, why would I invest in it? Right. There's, right. there's no money to be made in right. it, right? right? That's one. Right. The second thing is that we need to have a paradigm shift in the way we think. Mm. Uh, technology has changed mm. uh, immensely over the last five years. Mm. We have this Coursera, we have the mm. massive online MOOCs yeah. platform. Right, right. Right, where you can teach 40 million people mm. for free. Mm. Yeah, right. right. The best universities in the world have put their curriculum in. Mm. There are videos available, there is contact, there is seminars, webinars. Right. So you need to move beyond brick and mortar. You need right. to be, move beyond traditional concepts. So, mm. faculty, nahi hai, right. you know, the, right. not so, so many fa right. people are right. not available. Right. Well, one, one good professor mm. can teach a million people. Right. Teach. Dr. Gupta, I see you nodding. <coughs> you agree? With yeah, I agree, work, I agree right. almost. Uh, mm. With every, everything that uh, you said, uh, brick and mortar university is not the only way to go about this. Mm. But uh, I have my doubts about uh, the MOOCs, mm. uh, the massive online um, the open courseware. The, the research mm. currently points out, all the research currently points out mm. that uh, the learning out of those is uh, kind of restricted. Mm. There is the contact with the teacher, mm. most of the learning in any good place. Mm. Or 
learning takes place in the corridors, mm. not in the classroom. Right. So uh, the loneliness of a MOOC learner mm. is so big mm. and so uh, frightening mm. that people don't learn. Right. The largest number of registrations are for MOOC courses in Coursera and uh, edX are from India. Right. But the percentage mm. of people completing those courses is the lowest from India. Right. Uh, 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 there are other reasons besides that mm. it is mm. a lonely place. Mm. Uh, the uh, other reason is that preparation for doing those courses is so poor right. Uh, right. that we have. Right. Uh, our schools do not train our students to be mm. uh, critical thinkers. Mm. Uh, the, there's too much stress on content, right. not on the uh, thinking process that mm. goes behind learning. Mm. And so that causes a lot of people to drop out right. from the program. So you think there's a whole host of causes, but Dr. Mao, then does the answer lie in a little bit of this and a little bit of that, perhaps no great shift, but you know, the, the point that uh, uh, Mr. Pasricha is making that you don't sort of need to stick only to traditional models that have worked for you in the past, but look beyond, expand your thought, expand your horizon, but do you see us sort of doing enough of that, even in the years ahead? I agree with you. In fact, the jobs for 2020 probably, mm -hmm. you know, have not been even created as on today. Right. If I do not update my curriculum on an annual basis, hmm. I could be probably, you know, right. uh, suffering from what Indian right. higher education has suffered for the last couple of decades, right. where the curriculums have been changed at an average of the needs years. of the time. Six right. to seven years right. is the average of right. uh, curriculum updation in this country. Right. So that's one challenge which needs to be addressed mm. and I think we need to involve industry in a big way in terms of updation of curriculums. The present generation is, is very different from uh, the students of the, you know, uh, 10 years back. Mm. They are the most education minded generation I've ever seen. Mm. And perhaps the historically also it is uh, research that is the most educated, education minded generation which has ever emerged. Right. So there is huge respect for education, right. but this generation has emerged from a different uh, landscape. Right. They are networked, mm. you know, addressing uh, SMS in the classroom has to be acceptable. Mm. They think everybody has a fair chance to represent themselves. Mm. They think anybody can be a star. Mm. So this generation is very different from what we have taught in the past. Right. We also need as institution to get adapted to right. the present set of generation right. because the kind of jobs that are going to be created few years from now mm. would be keeping in mind this generation right. and That's not an the one we thought making. about uh, a decade That's back. That's an important point you're making that perhaps we haven't even thought about what the kind of jobs that this generation is going to fit into, perhaps that all those new profiles that are yet to be created. An important point and perhaps heartening point also that you're making is that the most education oriented, so this is not the one that's sort of shying away from education. acquiring their skills. That, 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 that's, that's a great point to take a break on. We're looking at the state of higher education in India back in a moment.